1999 Gölcük depremi ve 2023 yılında yaşadığımız Kahramanmaraş deprem felaketlerinin ardından dile getirilen bir teori var. Bu depremlere Amerikan harp teknolojisinin neden olduğu. Bu iddialar özellikle sosyal medyada sürekli olarak ortaya atılıyor. Depremin hemen öncesinde İstanbul Boğazı'ndan geçen ABD savaş gemisinin bir silah olarak kullanılan harp teknolojisini taşıdığı iddia edildi. Harp'ın ne olduğuna, sınırlarına ve kapsamına dahi hakim değilken bilim insanları tarafından yapılan açıklamaları görmezden gelip deprem bakımından dünyanın en aktif ülkelerinden biri olan Türkiye'nin yapay depremler yaşadığını iddia eden komplo teorileri dolaşıyor. Harp'la ilgili neler biliyoruz? Türkçe açılımı yüksek frekanslı etkin güneşsel araştırma programı olan HARP, ABD Hava Kuvvetleri, Deniz Kuvvetleri ve Alaska Fairbanks Üniversitesi tarafından finanse edilmiş bir çalışma. Tesis 1993 yılında Alaska'da kuruluyor. Projenin kurulu olduğu alanda 180 adet dev anten bulunuyor. Bu antenlerle üretilen manyetik dalgaların gelebilecek füzeleri havadayken imha etme, toprağın altında incelemeler yapma, denizaltı gemileriyle haberleşmeyi kolaylaştırma, ve atmosferin durumuna müdahale etme gibi işlevleri olduğu söyleniyor. ABD ordusu projeye desteği Mayıs 2014'te kesiyor ve 2015 yılında ise projeyi tamamen Alaska Üniversitesi'ne devrediyor. Öncelikle projenin gizli olduğu iddiaları doğru değil. Bu resmi olarak başlatılan bir proje. Sadece tesislere sivil ziyaretçi yasak. Tesislerin yeri gizli değil. Ağustos 2016'da harp tesisleri geçici süreliğine sivillere ziyaretine açılıyor. Şimdi harp nedir? Askeri bir silah mıdır? Harp teknolojisiyle depremleri tetiklemek mümkün müdür? Üretim amacı nedir? Taşınabilir mi? Bugün bu soruları yanıtlamak üzere Cornell Üniversitesi'nden yer ve atmosferik bilimler uzmanı Profesör Dr. David Hazel bizlerle. Mr. Hazel, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start with a general information about HARP. What is this technology? Can you tell us? Um, so HARP is basically a large radio transmitter, and it was uh, not it's not uh, unique in the world. There are other facilities like it, and it was uh, designed and built for the purposes of studying the ionosphere. So the ionosphere is a, a layer of ionized gas high above the Earth, and uh, it's a very rarefied gas, and uh, the ionosphere affects the way that radio waves propagate. And so we've known for quite a long time, um, really a hundred years or more, that um, that the ionosphere is there and that it influences radio wave propagation and it can enhance it and it can hinder it. Uh, and and what HARP does is it allows us to you know investigate the the physics, to investigate the science of uh, you know exactly what's going on. And of course, nature um, is the main driver of what goes on in the ionosphere, and uh, nature can. Um, Uh, induce um, effects that uh, that affect radio wave propagation um, very um, uh, severely. You now, HARPS uh, introduces very small perturbations into the ionosphere, but it does so in a controlled way. And so, we can do experiments like like we all did in high school. You know, where you make mm -hmm. a small change to something on your desktop and you see what happens, and then you can sort of systematically uh, develop you know knowledge of, uh, of what's going on in a little bit more sort of organized way than you would get if you just just studied what nature was doing on its own um, on day in and day out. So mostly that's what we do. Mostly we just study what nature does on its own, but, but the HARP facility gives us a way to um, induce you know, small changes and then see what happens, and, and that, uh, that allows us to come to closure on some of our scientific questions. Can you tell us about its working principles? Like, how does it work? Uh, HARP is really a radio transmitter like like others. It operates in what we used to call the shortwave radio band. And, uh, you know, there used to be many, many high power shortwave radio transmitters around when that was, a you know, a um, uh, an important modality of communications. And the, the electromagnetic waves go up and uh, they interact uh, with the ionosphere and they're absorbed in large part by the ionosphere. And they, they modify it, they change it, and mainly they induce uh, some heating in an organized way, uh, sort of in a regular way. And then the ionosphere responds to this by, well, becoming warm uh, and by becoming a little bit irregular in the way that uh, other media become irregular if you introduce heat to them. Uh, so so waves can be created. And um, and then there are other effects that can occur as well. So for example, the, the heated um, uh, species can produce air glow. So uh, it's possible that uh, even visible Uh, emissions can result if uh, if you have just the right conditions and a, a, a very clear night, you can actually see uh, those kinds of emissions. And there are other subtle features that occur too. Um, um, 
secondary radio emissions can occur, waves, not the waves that you transmitted, but other waves can uh, be produced spontaneously in the atmosphere. And then, um, and then we study these things. And so you need, for the most part, you need instrumentation to detect these effects because they're subtle. And uh, we study the effects and say, okay, yeah, so we, we, um, we turned on the radio transmitter and, and some air glow was induced. And, and then we try to study how much and why, or some radio waves were emitted and we try to study how much and why some irregularities were created. Um, maybe we can look at how GPS signals were affected as they passed through the ionosphere. So, so really the operating principle is that um, all radio waves um, are um, to one degree to another, you know, when they pass through the ionosphere affect it. And uh, HARP uh, operates in uh, such a mode and at such a frequency and with such characteristics that those, um, those uh, modifications that are induced in the atmosphere can be readily detected by instrumentation on the ground. What about HARP's limits? Uh, HARP is being responsible for lots of disaster and crises around the world, as you know, far as we know. It was blamed for several hurricanes around the U.S. Uh, Russia once said that HARP could cause climate change and held it responsible for the deaths in the heat wave in 2010. Are there any experiments that you know of about controlled weather change situations and like that? Of course, we do experiments every day on whether radio affects the weather because the world has, you know, thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of, of commercial radio transmitters and uh, they've never affected the weather anywhere else. I should say that uh, Russia has an atmospheric modification facility of its own, so it's a little bit disingenuous to go blaming HARP for uh, the world's problems. Um, it has you know, no effect on weather, it has no effect on climate, and um, there's simply no way that it could uh, interact with, um, with you, know, the, you know, the troposphere. The troposphere doesn't care about uh, radio waves at these frequencies. And I should say also the amount of power that's involved, even though it seems like a lot for a radio station compared to the kind of power that's involved in things like weather systems, it's just absolutely nothing. I mean, the, the human scale and the natural scale, uh, are they're incomparable. And so, uh, you know, the amount of power that's released in, uh, in a hurricane or, uh, in a, uh, or the total energy released in a hurricane or released through a, a storm system or a system of convective cells or something like that, it's just, you know, tremendously more than uh, the amount of energy that uh, the harp radiates over, you know, some, some you know, at the time of an experiment. Um, the scales are just incomparable. They don't belong together. These things don't belong in the same sentence. You know, there are lots of speculations in Turkey right now. I want to hear it from you once more. Is it possible for HARP to create earthquakes? So uh, my condolences uh, for the crisis in Turkey. The world uh, it stands with you and um, we all uh, uh, feel uh, and have sympathy for your uh, tremendous losses. Uh, as far as the connection between radio waves and seismic activity, once again, there's just, there's just no connection between radio waves and seismic activity. Now, earthquakes are caused by by plate tectonics and by uh, you know the massive forces that are unleashed when tectonic plates uh, uh, rub with one another. And uh, once again, you know radio waves and seismic events don't belong in the same sentence. I think this is something intuitively that that most people could appreciate. Even young children, you know, you have some experience with radio, you have some experience with seismic events. They these are, are incomparable. As far as we know, it's used by the U.S. Army to communicate with military units all over the world. Is HARP an electronic warfare device? No, that's not actually true. So HARP was built by the Navy and it was funded for a time by the Navy and the Air Force. It was never you know, built for any kind of operational use. And in fact, uh, you know, unclassified work takes place there. Anyone can visit there. Uh, foreign nationals can visit. Uh, students can visit. We're going to host, host a, a school next summer. Anyone can visit. And the work that takes place there is unclassified. And that means that you can't do classified work there. You're not allowed to do classified work there because it's an open environment. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the armed forces stopped funding the, this facility um, some years ago. I think it was around 2014 simply because it, it really was of no practical use for them. And I think that, um, uh, you know, the history of why uh, they built it to begin with is, is sort of uh, has more to do with politics than with military policy um, that they, they pulled out. And so the facility is funded by the National Science Foundation entirely. And all the work that takes place there is open. 
uh, as I said, anyone can, uh, and anyone with the, the appropriate sort of scientific credentials can do, can go there and perform experiments, including students, including non-nationals, non-U.S. nationals, and uh, and all the work is published in the open literature. Um, when experiments are being run, which is by the way very infrequent, HARP is operated a few weeks a year because it's expensive. And uh, and when it is operated, uh, typically the public is told and amateur radio operators can listen in and participate. And, um, you know, there's just nothing about this that is in any way secretive or clandestine or of any interest to the armed forces. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's never been an operational program uh, involving atmospheric modifications with any kind of military uh, applications. Simply, you know, nature is too unreliable. <laughs> and while, you know, conceivably, uh, a facility like HARP uh, could be used to, uh, would be of some use for uh, communications, particularly uh, submarine communications. That has not turned out to be practical because nature is just too unreliable and it, it's nothing that can be counted upon. And so I think that those ideas have been discarded. Have you ever visited the facilities? Very often, many times. Mm -hmm. I yeah. was there in October. We did some experiments in October, and I hope mm -hmm. to go back next summer, as I said, when we're going to have a, a school. Can you tell us about your impressions? It's a very pretty, uh, it's a gorgeous facility. It's it's really um, uh, something to look at. It's spectacular. And it's in Alaska, and that means that it doesn't really suffer any weathering. So it looks like the day it was built. Very, you know, made of very regular geometric patterns. The antennas are actually made out of wires that are draped between some towers, and they're, they're very kind of gorgeous sculptures. It's really uh, quite a sight. It's a very fine place to work. Um, I should say that HARP it has no instrument has very little instrumentation of its own so if you want to do experiments you have to bring your own instruments so that you can actually detect the phenomena that you're trying to study is it transportable some theories claim that ships can carry the harp system the harp is enormous it's i think it's spread out over 40 acres mm -hmm. and uh it would be extremely difficult i would say impossible to make any any significant changes to harp i mean you can find pictures of it on the web it's it's enormous and it has to be because, you know, it operates at low frequencies. And the, the deal is that uh, for antennas to be efficient, they have to be comparable in size to the wavelength of the signals that they're, they're transmitting. So by definition, ionospheric modification facilities have to be big. And that means immobile. 